Balinese culture is deeply rooted in mystery and history. Everyone has a past that has made them who they are today. People's personalities and ways of thinking are shaped by how they were raised and what happened to them in their lives. The same rule applies to Bali. The island's history shapes everything about it, from its land to its culture to its food. If you trace Bali's lineage, you'll discover that the island's population are largely descendants of migrants who arrived in the first century c, mostly Indians, Chinese, and Javanese, and laid the groundwork for Hinduism and Javanese culture. By bringing their own customs and beliefs, travel experiences are enhanced by cultural understanding. As the years pass, Balinese have continued in many ways to honor and respect their ancestors and the spirit world. They do everything they can from praying to their gods to wearing ceremonial garb and leaving offerings, kanang sari, for the gods to maintain harmony. Balinese Hindu faith is rooted on Vedic texts, ancient philosophies, and alternative lifestyles, all of which mutually support one another. To that end, Hinduism is not a dogmatic religion but rather the consequence of a spiritual way of life. Hinduism's traditions, like the religion itself, evolve and change with time. The introduction of Indian merchants brought Hinduism to Bali. Hinduism was maintained as the primary faith of the Indonesian people via rituals, traditions, and the arts long before Islam was ever a presence in the country. It also introduced religious concepts, myths, and stories, as evident in the many celebrations honoring the dead and the gods of various cultures. Temples in Bali follow the same architectural principles as their Indian counterparts. The Balinese word for temple, Pura, refers to a sacred complex that is often encircled by walls. The island is home to over 20,000 temples, each of which is dedicated to a different virtue, region, or other category. A genuine Balinese Hindu experience is a very personal and spiritual step on the path to self-discovery. The promise of moksha or ultimate fulfillment is central, becoming one with the universe. Balinese Hinduism has its origins in the unique spiritual traditions of the New Santara archipelago, and the enlightenments of saints who have lived on this land for thousands of years, before the nation was ever founded. The Hindu and Buddhist traditions of India first made their way to Java and then to Bali around a thousand years ago, providing an important cultural foundation for Balinese society. Javanese culture drew inspiration from a variety of sources, including that of the Chinese and Malay peoples. Bali infused these various cultures, giving rise to what is now known as Hindu-Javanese art and craftsmanship. Many Balinese artists of old possessed multiple talents, including painting, sculpture, and even dance. Art in Bali was and is deeply rooted in the local religion and was created solely for religious ceremonies. Bali's profound spiritual traditions are inextricably linked to artistic expression as a means to express devotion and fulfill obligations towards the deities. Paintings, carvings, jewelry, and stonework all over the island reflect the Balinese people's distinct style. While Ubud may be the most well-known area for Balinese artwork today, the majority of artists have always lived and worked in the smaller villages that have become known for their particular specialty. These days, most vacationers opt for mass-produced works of art and handicrafts as mementos and gifts for friends and family back home. But there are also those who prefer to take their time and travel to remote locations, such as villages, to purchase authentic artworks directly from their creators. Balinese art has become increasingly commercialized in recent decades, influenced by tourism. Despite being authentically based on the artwork used for spiritual practices and temple decorations, many works by Balinese artists have been shown in prestigious American and European galleries, and the island's artisans export their wares worldwide. A popular kind of Balinese souvenir, wood carving is an age-old art form that has evolved with the island and its many visitors. Despite the prevalence of cheaply made wooden decorations with inspirational sayings and cheesy cartoon characters, there is only one location to find really skilled artisans. Located in the Gionia Regency, Maz is a community renowned for its wood carvings and other forms of artistic expression. Many renowned craftspeople have emerged from this area. Visitors have traveled from all around the island and even other countries to study here. Wooden doors and wall pieces of varying sizes decorated with flowers, landscapes, and classic renderings of sceneries are common examples. Traditional Balinese medicine, practiced by a village healer known as a Balian, 
The Balian is often portrayed as a shaman or village doctor who uses spiritual knowledge and energy to treat patients. This is not just an idle belief, as many people in Bali believe in this kind of mysticism. This involves extensive familiarity with meditative practices, tantric rituals, and traditional medicinal plants. Some Balians study ancient scriptures known as Lantar, become well-versed in esoteric subjects, while others might simply be chosen to be blessed with wahyu, divine inspiration. They are known to mediate between the living and the dead in the afterlife. And when a situation calls for a religious ritual, Balian may also be tasked with calling on to mediate and bring about peace. If you're seeking for a Balian healer who specializes in anything specific, such as migraines, heart disease, physical injuries, or love spell removal, just do a search online. They're everywhere on Bali.Balian Tulang, a healer that specializes in repairing damaged Tulang, bone in Bahasa, Indonesia. If a friend or family member has bone difficulties, several Balinese opt to go to a Balian Tulang rather than undergo surgery. This option is far less expensive than medical procedures, and many people have reported being miraculously healed following a series of therapies administered by the Balian Tulang. Balian Manak, a midwife in charge of assisting other women during the delivery process, Manak in Balinese means to give birth. The existence of Balian Manak is significant in remote communities where there are no hospitals or clinics. Concerns about hygiene and the use of standard procedures don't stop Balian Manak from helping to deliver many healthy babies. Balian Manak are taught through government-funded programs to provide better care to expectant mothers. Balian Tenning, a member of Bali's elite who is skilled at foretelling the future, interpreting the past, and making predictions. It is common practice, however, for a Balian Tenning to use their psychic abilities abilities to aid their clients in finding lost items or uncovering criminal activity. Balian Terang Bali's pleasant tropical climate means that outdoor weddings and other celebrations are frequently held, that an unexpected downpour can quickly ruin things if no preparations have been made. If you want to stop the rain from falling, you might want to hire a Balian Terang. If you want them to come to your event, meditate and pray to the spirits who control the weather and use plates of fire whose rising smoke to push clouds away, you'll have to fork over about $250 United States dollars. Remember that no matter the weather, you won't get your money back. Balian Yusada the one who can cure and heal the sick. Most often, they will have a large number of launcher collections that detail various natural medicines and therapies available. It is not uncommon for them to have a special garden in their residential compound, where they cultivate a wide variety of medicinal plants. The Balian Usado will collect ingredients from their garden and make a potion called Lalo or a thick mashed paste called Babra to apply to the affected area of the body. If a Balian doesn't have all of the ingredients for a remedy on hand, they will usually send the patient to the local bazaar to procure what they need. Balian Pika is similar to Balian Usada, but instead of using natural ingredients as the medicine, they use sacred family relics that have been passed down from generation to generation. Before the healer begins chanting mantras and praying with family relics, the patient must perform certain offerings for the ritual. Balian upon. Balian Urit the healer who will be able to help anyone who has a problem within their internal organs by removing lumps and other obstructions so that blood and other vital fluids flows well within blood vessels. Balian Keeble specializes in providing magical charms or spells to protect anyone from spiritual attacks, hexes and curses, to become invulnerable. Balian Taksu Spirit mediums are sought out by people who wish to make contact with recently deceased loved ones. In order to help you, the Balian Taksu will go into a trance and open himself or herself up to the spirits, allowing you to have a conversation with the expected soul. The Malasti ceremony is one of the most important religious rituals in Bali, which takes place a few days before the Naipi ceremony, 
also known as the Day of Silence. This ceremony is a purification ritual to cleanse the body, mind, and soul of the Balinese people before the start of the new year. According to the Saka calendar, the Malasti ceremony usually takes place near the Coaster River, as the water is believed to have the power to purify and cleanse. The ceremony involves the procession of people dressed in traditional Balinese attire, carrying various offerings and sacred objects. The offerings include fruit, flowers, rice, and other symbolic objects. The people chant prayers and hymns, while they proceed to the water source. Night be in Balinese New Year, contrary to several other cultures all around the world that celebrate the New Year with sparkling festivities and ending the year with a bang. The Balinese New Year is a six day celebration. One of the days is dedicated to complete silence, night be, when the entire island comes to a standstill. With no scheduled incoming or outgoing flights from Ngora Rai Airport in Denpasar, DPS, it's indeed an exceptional experience, not only for the Balinese, but also for all the visitors that are in Bali during Nipi. If you are in Bali during Nipi, make sure you do not plan any traveling or outside. Activities. Galungan Galungan is one of the significant festivals celebrating the victory of Dharma, virtue, over Adharma, vice. It marks a 10 day period when the spirits of the ancestors are believed to visit the island. Balinese Hindu families will welcome the spirits with prayers and offerings. Dressed in traditional clothes, women balance on their heads the offerings made out of fruit and flowers stacked up high and neatly in baskets. The streets are filled with the beautiful penger, tall bamboo poles, decorated with different patterns of woven palm leaves, while the lower base is a unique covered stand, made to place some small offerings. The Galungan celebration will go on for 10 days until Kaningan, the day when the spirits leave Earth. Kaningan marks the end of Galungan the time when the ancestor spirits leave the island to return to their heavens above. Special offerings such as yellow rice are prepared. Kuningan is derived from the word kuning, which means yellow, and placed together with fruit and flowers in a small bowl made out of coconut leaves. The offerings stand as a symbol of gratitude for all that life has given in happiness, health and prosperity. It is believed that the ancestor spirits will ascend at midday and all special blessings and offerings should therefore take place before noon. Hari Raya Saraswati is a day devoted to Saraswati, a goddess of knowledge and creativity. Statues and paintings depicts the goddess as a four-armed beautiful woman dressed in pale colored clothes, holding a launter, a palm leaf manuscript a musical string instrument, usually a type of lute, and a mala string of prayer beads. She will be sitting or standing on a lotus flower or sometimes sitting on a swan surrounding by lotus flowers. The swan symbolizes knowing the difference between good and evil, while the water lily or lotus flower indicates holiness. Four days after Saraswati, the Balinese will devote themselves to increase their strength with prayers to the god called Sang Hyang Pramesti Guru. The name Pajarwesi is derived from the Balinese words for iron, wisi, and fence, pager, an iron fence which stands for the fortification against evil forces that might come that year. Pajarwesi is celebrated in different ways, all depending on your location. In the north of Bali, Pajarwesi will be marked similarly as Galungan. Penjers, family visits and various delicious meals. While in the south of Bali, the festivities are scaled down without penjers. Banton Balinese offerings you can't miss them wherever you go. You will see little baskets on the floor with incense sticks and little goodies, such as sweets, fruits and sometimes even some money and a cigarette. In front of shops and homes, in the middle of crossroads and junctions, and on temple shrines outside and even inside offices, restaurants and basically wherever you go. Why do the Balinese provide offerings? For one simple reason, it brings delight to the gods. Whosoever offers to me with devotion a leaf, 